guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the hardware tour of the Google Nexus One made by HTC. This is a Google Android device. It's running 2.1, which is eclair. In this video, we're going to talk about the specifications of the Nexus One and also compare the hardware to the iPhone and the HTC HD2. So to start, the device has a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor running at 1 gigahertz, just like the HTC HD2. It's got 512 megabytes of ROM for storage. Um, in addition, it comes with a Class 2 4 gigabyte micro SD card, which is a lot of memory, and it's really great that they throw that in. Of course, that's expandable. Um, it also has 512 megabytes of RAM, which is probably the most amount of RAM that we've seen yet on a mobile device. The HTC HD2 had a tremendous 448 megabytes of RAM but it looks like the Nexus One has even more. It's got a 3.7 inch AMOLED display with 800 by 480 resolution. That's the same resolution as the HD2. It's got Bluetooth 2.0, Wi-Fi, 802.11b and G. Um, it has 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for audio, so you don't have to use any sort of converter. Uh, it also has a five megapixel camera on the back with autofocus, and it also has an LED flash. Uh, the battery is 1400 milliamp hours, which is pretty big for a device of this type. And also it is a proximity sensor, a light sensor, a G sensor, and a digital compass. So let's take a look at the hardware of the Nexus One. It comes in this pouch, which isn't leather. It's kind of a vinyl material. It has a little Android logo on the front. It adds considerably to the depth of the device. The device is quite thin at 11.5 millimeters. So let's take out the device. Something that's great about the Nexus One is that it is not a fingerprint magnet. The back is covered with this sort of rubbery coating, and the front has what appears to be an anti-oil uh, coating like you'll find on the iPhone and on the HD2. So you really don't get many fingerprints on the display, which is really fantastic. So as mentioned, the display is 3.7 inches diagonal uh, compared to the iPhone that is larger, but compared to the HD2 that is obviously smaller. The HD2 has a 4.3 inch screen. The resolution, as mentioned, is 800 down and 480 across. Up here, you can't really see it behind the black, but there's a proximity sensor and a light sensor. And up here is the speaker grill. Going down a little further, we have a few buttons typical of an Android device. We have a back button, a menu button, home, and search. Something I find a little bit annoying is that when you're typing on the keyboard, oftentimes you may accidentally press one of these buttons because it uses capacit a capacitive screen uh, sensor down here. So you're tapping lightly here and you may accidentally press one of those. Just something to watch out for. Down here we have a little ball that will work for kind of like a multi-function D-pad uh, that you can press in to select. It also will glow various colors depending on which system notifications are currently active. If you have a new email, it's one color. If you have a new SMS, it's another color. So it's very helpful so you don't have to turn on your device to sort of see what kind of messages await you. On this side of the device, we have a volume rocker which has a little plus and a minus button. While we're on the side, let's take a look at the thickness of this device compared to the iPhone. It's thinner than the iPhone, but it's a little bit thicker than the HD2, only by 0.5 millimeters, although most people won't notice uh, that difference of thickness. Going over to the bottom, we have micro USB, so it'll work with all your standard plugs. Then we have these kind of, it looks like a connector for some sort of dock, perhaps uh, the dock that will work for, um, for the Nexus One that's coming out soon. Here we have a microphone. It's one of two microphones. The other microphone helps to cut down on noise. I haven't tested that yet. Nothing on the other side of the device. And on the top, we have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a standby button in the same location that you find on a lot of the other HTC devices like the, the Touch Pro 2 here, which is a really good location. So tapping that brings you to the unlock screen. Nice little screen animation. Turning over to the back, as mentioned, we have a five megapixel camera with LED flash. Here's the speaker for the speakerphone, which I've found to be not too good. It distorts quite easily. Unfortunately, even if you put the volume down, we've got some branding back here that says Google and HTC. In this little strip, when you order the Nexus One off of the Google website, you can get a little engraving here, which I chose not to do. Here's the extra microphone for the noise cancellation. And if we take off the back battery cover, we have the micro SD slot. And you can't get the micro SD card out without removing the battery, which is totally annoying. Um, and over here is the slot for the SIM card. Oh, 
Overall, in hand, the device feels high quality. It feels like it's not going to slip out of your hand. And as I mentioned earlier, best of all, it doesn't feel like a fingerprint magnet like you would find on some other devices that have black, shiny coatings and lots of shiny surfaces galore. Uh, this is a, a very nice device, a very nice form factor, and it feels very light in the pocket. It slips right in. It feels a lot smaller than the iPhone, even though it's really not. And it's only three grams less heavy than the iPhone. But for some reason, uh, perhaps because of the edges are so rounded or because the materials aren't shiny or something like that, it just feels really lightweight and small in the hand, which is quite nice. So we've got a lot more coming up on the Nexus One. We're going to talk about all the software features and the applications and the Android experience that Google has brought on this really interesting and nice looking device from Google. That's it for now.